They've turned from their sin. They've made their sacrifice. And guess what? You ready for the fire to come down? Crickets. Nothing. Wait. God, we're here. We've turned. We're turning back to you. Where, where's, where, where you at? After all this, God is silent. And the people don't hear from God for over 400 years. Now what? God, we did it. Where you at? And then one night in a town called Bethlehem, a little baby's cry. I should have had a sound effect. I'm, like, I'm trying. I don't know. Somebody with a baby, pinch him or something. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Guys, they've been waiting. They want the presence. And God's silent. And 400 years later, in the middle of a night, there's a little baby that lets out a cry and he shatters the silence. Matthew 1, and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. What's that mean? Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We've been trying to make houses for God and for him to dwell with us. And then here comes this precious little baby. And Miss Ann, you can come on up if you're ready. Luke chapter two, don't check out, just a couple more verses. Luke chapter two, 21 and 22. This is so good, guys. You remember? Haggai, he prophesied that the, the ladder that's to come in this temple is gonna blow anything that Solomon ever did out of the water. Look at verse 21 of Luke 2. And at the end of eight days, so Jesus has been born, at the end of eight days, he was circumcised. He was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Listen to verse 22. Please pay attention to this. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they, Mary and Joseph, brought him, who? Up to, stay with me, to present him to the Lord. And I'll ask you, where do you think in Jerusalem they presented him to the Lord at? Are you kidding me? The prophet prophesied that you think we're gonna restore some temple that's laid with gold and all these precious stones and it's massive and it's grand and all of this things that we would say, ooh, I like, right? That's fancy, this is exciting. And here's this little baby. And this baby is Jesus. He is the savior of the world. And when his parents bring him into the temple, that prophecy is fulfilled. John 1, 14 says this, and the word became flesh. Little old tiny baby. And he dwelt among us. You know what that word dwelt means? Tabernacle. Can't make this stuff up. God is so awesome. And we have seen his glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. You see, God's desire is to be with every one of us in this room today. And God no longer wants to live in a, a man-made tent that's set up. He no longer wants to live in a, in a temple made of stone. You know where God desires to live? I'm glad you asked. 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are God's temple 
and that God's spirit dwells in you. Ah! God desires to be with us today. God desires, make it personal. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, listen to me, don't check out. God desires to be with you today. As a matter of fact, God desires for you to be his temple where there's nothing that separates you from our heavenly father. And the only way that is possible is Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. You see, Jesus came to this world. God, creator, took on the form of his creation. He was born of a virgin, and when he came on the scene, they announced Emmanuel, God is with us. Jesus grows up and he keeps the law that every one of us have broken. And at 33, because the wages of sin is death, Jesus never sinned. The death that he took on that cross was your death and mine. He took the death penalty upon himself, upon his shoulders, and allowed himself to be nailed to a tree to pay your penalty and my penalty. And on that cross, as he bled, the last thing he said was, It is finished. Scripture says the veil in the temple, that holy of holies, the place where the presence of God used to dwell, something very unique happened at that place. That veil that separated perfect God and unperfect sinful man, that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. No man had the ability to do that. We could never, we could never do enough to gain acceptance, to be with God, there always required a holy, righteous sacrifice. And that's what Jesus did. And literally because of Jesus' acceptable sacrifice on the cross, God the Father rent that veil in two, symbolizing that there is no more separation. There is no more separation that God desires to be with you. He desires to be with me, to be with us. But I got news for you. It's only his way. You don't get to choose how you go to heaven. Jesus is the way. Jesus is God with us. And Jesus wants a relationship with you today.